So it seems like the month of January, we have been giving much love to our menopausal listeners. And it just kind of happened that way. So we talked about estrogen, good, bad. Is it your friend? Is it your foe? We talked about things you can do to avoid that midlife, midsection that comes on with menopause. And now today I have a very special guest, a very good friend of mine, Deborah Atkinson, and she is going to shed light on the exercise component after 50. So this is going to be a game changer for you, and you can probably hear the excitement in my voice. The latest introduction, the latest member of the family to the fixer line is Metabolism Fixer. And this, oh my God, I formulated this just for all my people out there that need to lose weight, that need help in the weight loss department, that can't lose weight no matter what they do, that feel like they have a slow metabolism, and that might be thinking of trying all those peptides out there, you know, the Beverly Hills soccer mom drug of choice for weight loss peptides. Or even if you're on them already and you're like, man, these are really expensive and I'm still not losing weight, add in metabolism fixer. Here's what I did. I took the power of T2, which increases your basal metabolic rate while you are sitting there watching Netflix. You're burning fat while you're watching Netflix. I combined it with a very unique patented ingredient called Suppressa. Suppressa has multiple clinical trials backing its efficacy in reducing your appetite, decreasing snacking, and providing way more control over your food intake. It is amazing. We also see improved emotional well-being, just decreased food cravings all around, reduced hunger, and weight management. Add on top of that, we have green tea extract, we have purple forest purple tea extract, both of which affect the metabolism in a very positive way without the jitters of normal fat burning supplements out there from the 1980s and 90s, right? The ones that made you feel like you're having a heart attack. You will not have that in any of my supplements, thyroid fixer or metabolism fixer. But metabolism fixer, oh yeah, we kicked it up a notch. It is in powder form. So you can drink it through your day. It's going to flavor your water. We got orange crush and refreshing citrus. I love them both. It is going to keep you under control all day long. So you throw a couple scoops in your water bottle in the morning, throw a scoop or two in your water bottle throughout the day. You will have fat burning and appetite control the entire day for what? An eighth of a price of the peptides? Oh my God, you can't go wrong. So grab some metabolism fixer today. Please let me know how you do on it. I am super excited for you. Super excited. Let me introduce you to Deb, and then we will dive into all of the good stuff. So Deb Atkinson, she is a wellness coach, a hormone balancing fitness expert, and Flipping 50 founder. She has helped over 250,000 women flip their second half with the vitality and energy that they want. She's the best-selling author of You Still Got It, Girl, the After 50 Fitness Formula for Women, Navigating Fitness After 50, Your GPS for Choosing Programs and Professionals You Can Trust, and Hot Not Bothered. I love that. Deborah hosts Flipping 50 TV and the Flipping 50 Podcast, an AARP top podcast for 50 plus. She's a frequent speaker and TEDx presenter of everything women in menopause learned about exercise may be a lie. She has 38 years full-time fitness experience, is an international fitness presenter for associations, including the International Council on Active Aging, IDEA, and SCA, and Athletic Business, and Can Fit Pro. She's an American Council on Exercise subject matter expert and prior senior lecturer in kinesiology at Iowa State University. Deborah is also the founder of Flipping50.com and creator of the Flipping 50 Fitness Specialist Program for Fitness Professionals. She's a frequent contributor at HuffPost, ShareCare, and other featured outlets on the Education Advisory Board for MedFit.org. Deb, you've done so much. This is craziness. You are- I'm tired. I know, right? 
But you know what? You take care of yourself. So you're not tired. This is true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it is still yeah. just as fun as day one, year one today, as it was 38 years ago. I mean, and that is why it's like, it seems like a blink. Yeah. And you've accomplished yeah. so much in that time. So what <laughs> got you interested and, and kind of focused on women in menopause? Tell us your story. Hmm. You know, it was like the accidental career potentially. So um, it didn't actually happen on purpose. So literally I was, I'm the youngest child of four. My mom was almost 40 when she had me. And, you know, think back to 1964, that wasn't sexy yet. That wasn't normal, you know? So she was an older mom. My older sister was 16 and the story goes, when the three of us were out, people assumed I belonged to my sister. My mother was mortified by that. But, <laughs> you know, growing up, I was always around older adults. And I grew up with the music of, you know, the older baby boomers. And so when I was in college and we had to begin doing practicals and taking on pseudo clients and practice with them, I always got the older adults. I always got the alumni and the staff and enjoyed it. And I was able to create rapport. So I actually continued to work with them from I was 22 to 49 when I actually turned in my resignation letter and I quit. And I didn't quit my job to start Flipping 50. I quit to start supporting trainers and health coaches. There wasn't a lot of health coaches back then yet, but helping them with marketing and selling. And people here may not like to hear that, but the, the reason is the good ones, the ones with the education and the heart often leave the industry because they don't know how to sell and market. And we need to keep them so that you have better choices. And that's what I wanted to do when I left. And then I realized if I'm not training, I become irrelevant. Why would they take my information, my guidance, my recommendations? I'm like, I have to continue doing some training myself. So I thought, okay, I've got to pick a niche and I'm going to work with the group that I most work with all through my last 30 years. Mm -hmm. And of course I was in menopause or approaching it. I wasn't, wasn't really struggling yet. And so it became a natural, you know, to talk to women who were my age and actually 10 or 15 years older. So I continued that and I watched Flipping 50 grow like this and, and I'm still working with trainers, but that, that side of the business has not grown nearly as fast. Right. Oh my gosh. So you're, you're in story. school with a, a young looking face and body. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Just, I've been old for a long time. I've been old before. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you look absolutely amazing and anyone that saw mm -hmm. your your well, your headshot, but you we can see the headshot that I posted of you. I mean, you can see your body, your muscles, your lean, your muscular. It's it's beautiful. So I'm sure many women are looking at that, going, "Yeah, but I can't get there. She must have good genetics." Um, you know, I'm over fifty. There's no way I can look like that. She's got to be like thirty five. That's a lie. So can you tell the listeners? what they can start doing. And we're, we're going to get into the nitty gritty of exercise because I have a lot of like you pet peeves on what people are doing wrong. Can you tell the listeners if that is, is that genetics, Deb? Or have you worked your ass off to look like that? Well, uh, let me tell you what happened when I worked my ass off. I, it got bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, it backfired. So I do love endurance exercise. So I do have to, you know, let everybody know, yes, I've done training for eight Ironman triathlons and they give you the whole day to do those folks. So it is long, wow. but here's what happens when somebody trains at that level, like hours of running and hours of biking. And we don't go for a swim for 20 minutes. It's an hour or hour and a half. It's a lot of activity. You actually risk wasting your muscle when you're doing that, losing muscle and losing bone when you're training in triathlon, because there's a lot of unloaded time in the pool and on a bike. We all know Lance Armstrong and whatever you like or don't like about him, he was on the bike. He has osteoporosis. And this was before cancer. 
So all that unloaded time, no weight bearing, not good. So, you know, I got away with it. I got away with it until I didn't. And when my hormones begin to change, the last Ironman I've done, I gained 12 to 14 pounds, you know, and I could not get that off. The Ironman was over and I stopped training and back just started walking and doing yoga and trying to chill out because I knew that's what I needed. Because up here, I knew why that was happening. And down there, I was like, I'm committed. I got to do it. And um, so ended up, you know, it's really taken until about now. I weigh just a, a few pounds more than really what I was used to thinking was my ideal weight. But I am at a lower body fat percent yeah. than than ever. Easier by lifting weights twice a week, doing interval training for 20 to 30 minutes twice a week, and in between walking and doing yoga. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's that's an anybody can do that. When I quit, you know, I quit everything. I quit safety and security, a TIAA, a craft fund insurance, the regular paycheck. And I panicked because my son was going to start college in eight months. And I suddenly thought, what am I doing here? Right. I mean, what, what was that? I just gave that letter of resignation. Mm -hmm. And so I really strapped myself into the keyboard and building a business online to learn what that was about. And so I was exercising maybe 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, where I'd been exercising hours for 30 years. Yeah. By the time I was into my first year of building that business, I realized that I was leaner and thinner and stronger looking, yeah. healthier feeling than I had been exercising for, for hours, most mm -hmm. days of my, my life in the 30 years before it. And I thought, okay, this is this is totally wrong. This is not what I taught when I was teaching in the kinesiology classroom to students who were going to be trainers and gym owners. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, not what I learned. So I started digging into the research and that's when it occurred that, you know, realize what small fraction of females are actually subjects in science and the subject of the research studies. Mm -hmm. But then when we break it up and we know we have adolescents and then we have young women who don't yet want to be pregnant. We have women who do want to be pregnant. We mm -hmm. have pregnant women and postnatal and perimenopause and menopause. And every one of those demands a different exercise prescription. And we're not getting it. Mm -hmm. We're getting generically what was built for a mouse in a study or a man. And right. sometimes, sometimes a young woman. That's it. So yeah. how are we going to lose weight as women in midlife where I think we're, we're kind of at our optimal fat storage. That's what our bodies want to do easiest. And we're following studies that were built based on men who are in the peak of muscle mass. Cause there's usually about 25 years old. What's similar about them, right? Yeah. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely exactly. nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And I have heard that about studies before being very male centric and kind of, I mean, whether it's on exercise or in the pandemic, it, we're, we're very male centered in studies. And you and I grew up in the eighties and nineties. So just because your program is flipping 50, just because we titled this, you know, exercise with menopause, this yeah. applies to the 30 and 40 year olds too, because if you kill yourself, and you are a cardio queen. And like I said, Debbie, you and I grew up in 70s, or 70s, 80s, 90s, where it was just that step class, aerobic oh, class, right. Jane Fonda, where it was cardio, cardio, cardio. Yeah. And like I never did an Ironman, but the, the figure competitions that I did required a couple hours at the gym, totally destroying my body. And I, I can relate to your statement that now... I look better, feel better, and stronger than when I competed in my 20s. And, and that's from backing off the cardio and not killing mm -hmm. myself. So what you're saying today, I think, applies to multiple age groups of women. Yeah. Even if you are, like you said, maybe you're fertile and you're trying to get pregnant. Maybe you're, you're, you have three kids and you're like, no more for me, but I just want my, my body back because it's been destroyed by the three kids. All of this applies 
to get you to a better fitness level, better strength, better body, better energy. Absolutely. And I, I would say to those women who are in their 30s or in their 20s, start these habits now and you will sail through menopause. I mean, how exciting is it going to be? They're not going to be having the conversations we have because they won't need them. Very true. So what is the biggest mistake you see women making? I kind of just touched on it, maybe gave it away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you say it's cardio or is it something else? No, I, I would say it is cardio. And because of maybe that, it's not the weight room, right? It's, you know, too much of that, too, too little of this and overall just too much. So there are those women. In fact, I, I just got off the phone with, with one doing a consultation and she was totally, she was calling herself on it. She goes, I love to exercise. That's not my problem. And then she just described what she'd been doing. And she said, I've been listening to you and I know I need to hear this more frequently, <laughs> so, but absolutely just thinking more, 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 more. And then after that, if you're not able to do it because you're working too much or you're too tired, you, you're telling yourself you need to do it. We're carrying around guilt often for something we shouldn't be doing anyway. And if you're carrying that around, that's like extra baggage. And I think if you put it down and start thinking, my, my being busy is actually saving me from myself, from doing something I shouldn't be doing anyway, that you'll start to get better results. Mm -hmm. That's very true. So we have women doing too much cardio, not enough weights. And then we oh, have yes. just doing overall too much. And then we have the other group, which can bleed into the, the prior two of, oh, I didn't get my run in today. I feel mm -hmm. guilty. And even though I'm fatigued and it's the end of the day, I'm going to push myself anyways. And I was one. I was one. I had that guilt. I am, I'm happy to be free from that now, but I had that guilt. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and we use a rule in flipping 50. So I have 10 tenets, like the 10 commandments, right? So it is, you know, interval early or intense early and light late. So that at the end of the day, it's a reminder for women that if you're feeling like, well, I didn't get the workout in this morning, you know, something got in the way or I didn't get up or something, something, I'm going to catch up. I'm going to get it in the evening that you realize that's actually not the thing that is going to help you probably reach your goals, which, you know, we all know the biggest goals for most women are weight loss or weight maintenance or energy, right? And vitality and in order to have all of that, you have to have good night's sleep. And that's what that's all about. Intense, early, light, late, so that you don't disturb your hormones and you can get a better night's sleep. And you're better off to dump that interval training. Forget it. I missed a day. Okay, maybe tomorrow will be my day. But tonight, I'm going to just go for a walk or I'm going to just do yoga or your equivalent of yoga. And that will be a better way to remove the roadblock that is keeping you from the energy or from the weight loss, depending on what your goal might be. I love that. It just takes the pressure off because right. even if we're saying, hey, you want to get in two interval sessions per week, you want to get into heavy weight training sessions per week. And yoga. I mean, even us just saying that, they're probably going, okay, wait, I need to write this down and get this in and I didn't get it in this week. Oh, but then it's the weekend and we have plans and I won't be able to do it then. No, it's it just break it down into simple steps. And if you do three workouts in a week, that's better than none. Mm -hmm. So you give yourself credit instead of beating yourself up. Absolutely. And then there's those people listening who, you know, three workouts a week might be too much, right? So we can't forget those women who are struggling with maybe adrenal fatigue. You know, you wake up in the morning and you feel like you've got a hangover, but you never had the fun, right? And yes. that means probably we should relook at your exercise right now and just take it away and give you some restore before more, which is the first tenant of flipping 50. You've got to really fill your hole up before you start exercising to get more energy. So if you're, you know, really tired all the time, or if you finish a workout and you feel like you could take a nap, you don't feel more energized the rest of the day. That's a signal that probably right now, whatever your routine is, 
is not a good fit for where your hormone status might be. Yeah. And, and I always like balancing thyroid and hormones before we talk about exercise. If someone's doing something when they come to see me, that's mm-hmm. fine. I say, you know, we'll make, we'll make sure that you're not a cardio queen and killing yourself. But if you're, if you're doing a couple of days worth, I'm not changing a thing until we get your hormones and thyroid more balanced. Mm-hmm. So like you said, Deb, so they can handle it. So they have the energy yeah. to actually enjoy it and then have a productive day in front of them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and I totally agree. And I think you can do that lab testing and you can do it signs and symptoms wise, right? You can easily read for somebody if they come in with this list of da 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 da, you know, without even testing, right? Right. Exactly. I'm sure you see a ton of that in, <laughs> in, yeah. your, in your clients. I'm sure you see a ton of it. So what would you tell a typical menopausal woman I mean you've seen them come into your your practice of doing this this and this I don't know so you'll have to tell me what are they normally doing and then what do you have them transition to do because they are in that menopause state even if they're on bioidentical hormone replacement they still don't have the the hormones that they once did and their body is still shifting so what do you see and then what what do you tell them to do yeah well quite often they're they're either doing one of two things. So there is a lot of women who are walking. They're walking and maybe they're doing um, Pilates or wondering if yoga is resistance training enough. And so my answer to that is no, no, it's not. (laughs) Um, And I don't discriminate. I'm a certified yoga instructor and I'm a Pilates instructor also. And I love them both. They have their place but they can't replace picking up heavy weights Mm -hmm. as, as heavy as you safely can protecting your joints from injury. That's really going to be the key. And there is no better friend for a girl who might be 50 something or 40 something who hopes someday to be 90 something. Mm -hmm. That is what you want. And, and it's a two for one. You'll be strong then and independent and nobody will change your pants, right? But also you get the benefit of now feeling sexier, feeling stronger, feeling more confident in your body, not feeling like something else or or those hormones where we can't quite figure out what what is that are in control. You're back in control. You're feeling better. And that is irreplaceable, first of all. So Strength training not being really present. So I think not quite understanding what is resistance training. And part of that, I'm going to blame on sometimes going to a Western doctor who simply says, just walk. That's yes. weight bearing exercise. That's good for bones, but then not getting the rest of the story. And so it's not your fault, right? If you've started that and it is a fabulous base. So I don't mean it's throw walking under the bus because I actually think you should always come back to that. That kind of activity every day is actually very, very helpful for decreasing cortisol levels, especially if you can get outside. But you actually want to make sure you've got strength training. That is the the absolute next thing to add. And the other piece is, again, still doing lots and lots of cardio. And I'm still surprised because I think I hear myself say it so often. I think, aren't you hearing this all the time? That a lot of women in our age range have heard for decades that the cardio is what burns the fat. So if I want to lose fat, don't I first need to be doing cardio and then I should do the weights later. And so if we could break that taboo up and kind of dodge that myth, that would be fantastic. Here's the truth. If we look at in 30 minutes, we can do cardio or we can do weight training. Which one of those 30 minutes is going to burn the most calories? The cardio, it will. But at the end of the year, which one is going to contribute to a metabolism? So when you're sitting here, you're burning more calories all day, every day. And which one boosts your metabolism for up to 24 hours after the workout? The strength training. And it is the strength training that is going to help you maintain that skeletal system as long as you're taking a breath. So that is your number one priority. If you're ever 
I need to do both and I'm, I'm really tight on time. Don't skip the strength ever. Exactly. I think a lot of times people are forced to choose. They are limited in time. And Mm -hmm. I stopped doing cardio about two years ago and I use my weight session to get my heart rate up. And I think one of the downfalls of, of exercise gadgets would be Mm -hmm. stupid watches. Like how many calories you burn because people focus on and they go, Oh, well, I didn't have a good workout today. I only burned 200 calories. No, it's not, it's not even about the calorie burn. It's about what you said. What is the long term? How is it affecting your body and your health for those first 24 hours after your workout and for the next 30 years? Yeah. Well, and exactly what you said, it's, it's actually not about the calorie burn during the session, but it's after what we call the after burn, right? Or the EPOC is called the excess post oxygen consumption. And means while you were exercising, your body was burning more calories using oxygen. So for every liter of oxygen, there's five calories burned. I must have said that every day for 16 years, okay, <laughs> in the classroom. But the whole point is then your body pays that back mm-hmm. afterward and that the afterburn between strength training and cardiovascular activity has been proven in science over and over again that the strength training afterburn is much higher than a cardiovascular workout is. I want to take a minute and tell you about my new love, Athletic Greens. So you may have heard of them before, but I'm going to give you my take on AG. I started taking Athletic Greens because like all of you, I know I'm not getting in the nutrients I need and my goal is optimal health and good skin. So I need to supplement, but I don't want to take a million pills a day. So enter Athletic Greens. I wanted to give them a try first because of their origin. Many of you know I'm science-based and I fully respect when a company is created from a pain to purpose story someone's own struggle. So Athletic Greens founder experienced a ton of gut health issues and ended up on this complicated supplement routine costing him over $100 a day, which is ridiculous. So he said enough, use science, create his own and perfected the taste. So there is the birth of Athletic Greens. And then the second reason for falling in love is the taste because I've tried different green drinks and so have you and you don't like them. They taste like dirt and you end up throwing them out and you certainly don't do it every day. Now I actually look forward to Athletic Greens because it has a clean, mild taste that is refreshing. It also, bonus, has 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced, superfoods, probiotics, adaptogens. It just starts your day right. And it actually gets your system ready for everything else you're gonna put in it. You get more nutrients out of your food. The other supplements you're taking for thyroid support actually get absorbed and work better when you start the day with Athletic Greens. Less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no chemicals, no artificial anything like I tell you to avoid. So I think right now, I think it's just time for you guys to try this out too. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you, hold on to your pants, one year supply, a free one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and then five free travel packs with your first purchase. So all you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com backslash Dr. Amy, that's D-R-A-M-I-E, spell it right, no doctor spelled out, spell my name right. Again, that's athleticgreens.com backslash D-R-A-M-I-E, Dr. Amy, to take ownership over your health and get in on this special, a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs. Let me know what you think. But the big thing for, I think, women who are in midlife and then later, for sure, is the boost that we get in muscle protein synthesis. And that is only going to happen from strength training. And so maybe we should break that down and talk about what muscle protein synthesis, that is our ability to use protein that we consume to the use of our muscles. So Muscle is based on protein, the amino acid quality in proteins that we eat come back into the building blocks for muscle. So those of you that want, you want to be toned and you want to see that tone, that's going to take muscle, that's going to take protein and, and high quality protein is really important, but we lose the ability to use protein that we eat 
And so that muscle protein synthesis goes down. So we will look for ways that we can boost that. So in older adults, we don't become frail and mm -hmm. old and weak and then have to go into homes and have care, strength training. That boosts muscle protein synthesis mm -hmm. and also then eating high quality protein. And if you pair the two, so you do a good workout and afterward you have a high quality protein. Now we've done a two for one. And if you do that consistently and regularly throughout your week and your month and your year, now you are almost reversing aging because what typically otherwise would happen is not happening to you. Mm -hmm. I love that. I'm so happy you said that too, because you probably see a lot of women not eating enough protein as well, right? Yeah, not eating enough protein, not eating, you know, enough carbs. And we're very scared of carbohydrates. And so sometimes that gets so low that muscle actually needs some carbohydrate as well. Mm -hmm. And um, when I see a woman in a bad mood all the time, I ask about carbs. <laughs> you know, are you eating because of carbs? Because serotonin, you know, is also helpful for you. <laughs> But absolutely. Yeah. Eating too little has probably been a bigger mistake for my entire 38 years than eating too much yeah. for women in particular. And especially if you're plateauing, mm -hmm. you were making progress and you're getting more fit. You're picking up heavier weights. You're able to run faster, maybe further, but you're still kind of cutting the calories like that body over there that wasn't in good shape. You have to feed an athlete. And if you've stopped that, your body will be putting on the brakes. So yeah. that's why plateaus often happen is we need to keep some metabolic flexibility. You need to be able to burn and use calories and eat them when you need them because you're more active. Uh, I love you for saying it. And this is why I like having guests on because even for my, my patients that are listening to this, you know, a lot of times I'm very guilty of focusing on what I focus on because that's what we do. We focus on our specialty. So when I get a call, and of course we talk nutrition in, in, in the initial consult, we're going over labs, we're doing all that. We're adjusting hormones, adjusting thyroid, talking about exercise, but that gets, like I said, put on the back burner until we get more balance. But then I'll get the call two, three months in, I hit a plateau. And I immediately go to, all right, we need to recheck your thyroid. We got to check your hormones and your testosterone, you know, drop down, da, da, da. Yeah. And you just shed light on a question that I'm not asking enough. Are you eating enough? Or are you starving yourself because you're getting frustrated that you're not losing? So you figure not eating this and that will help my body shed more weight. And yeah. that's so true. That starvation theory, that starvation model that that occurs it does occur it does happen when you starve yourself your body will absolutely lock down and not shed a pound of fat it, it, it's real i mean we learned about it decades ago but it's real it is and yet we we keep i think just i don't know what it is but i think it's women more than men definitely we keep going back to this it must be me like I must be eating too much. I don't have enough discipline. I don't have enough willpower. And we, we think it's us doing something wrong when actually we could stand to probably eat a little bit more. Sometimes it's gotta be a little higher quality food, right? Yeah. But that's, that's a big one too. Well, even just with the whole calorie in calorie out model, and I know we weren't yeah. going down nutrition that much, but it's worth talking about in, in that, well, number one, I think you have a job, you and I have a job of de-brainwashing people mm -hmm. because it's what we learned in the 80s, 90s, early 2000s. It's the fitness and shape magazines. It's the now Instagram just pounding you with this is the best mm -hmm. workout and that's the best workout. Here's a workout app and here's a before and after picture that, that does not apply to, a, again, a woman in her 40s and 50s and 60s. You can't be doing the Instagram workouts that the 25-year-olds are doing, posting their selfies afterwards. It just doesn't work. So I think there's almost like a deep brainwashing. You have to pull out of them. Calories in, calories out doesn't matter. If you eat like high-quality food, you could eat more calories. Don't be a cardio queen. 
Like get that out of your head, everything that you learned. And it's a tough job to, to undo yeah. those years of pounding. It is. It's, it is that unlearning. Absolutely. And it's funny that you mentioned, you know, what we see on Instagram. And I, I want to mention this because I do work with fitness pros who are coming through and they're doing the, the menopause fitness specialist course. And yeah. What I hear from them, you know, when I'm doing their initial onboarding call is, you know, I'm teaching a bar class and I always have these women come up to me and say, you have the greatest, whatever, abs, thighs, something. And, and then she's like, to me, she's saying, that's not what I do to get them. Like it bar isn't what I do to get them. And so I think Instagram is, you know, a lot of false advertising. You know, you see somebody doing bar and doing Pilates and the body that you see may not have come from the activity that you see them doing. It's it's modeling. And that's I think we forget that. Yeah. Oh, it's very easy to forget it. Even when I'm being sold to and I know I'm being sold to, I still (laughs) buy it. (laughs) I know what's going on. Right. It's just too good to be true. Yeah, you got me. (laughs) <laughs> if I buy those pants, I will have an ass like her. So I'm buying the pants. <laughs> you won't be able to breathe, but you will yeah. have those. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But yeah. I mean, you have a tough job at, at, at the, the reprogramming of, yep. of the brain, literally. But once you do, I'm sure your clients come back and go, Oh yeah, thank you so much for getting me off the hamster wheel of the of the treadmill. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. So my body's so much better. Yeah, it, it's it's and it's just the weight up here, right? The like I should and I I'm doing it wrong or am I doing it wrong? That I think is the biggest piece. But it is that unlearning and in our community, you know, in our members area. You know, I've got certain members who've been in there since they're the founding members. They've been in there for five years. And then I've got newer members and um, I've I've got a community coach who is a little newer than some of my veteran members. And someone will make a comment like, you know, this was a really tough. This workout was really tough on this old lady. And I went in there and I was all over that. I was like, don't you say that. And then somebody else commented on, oh, we're in the same bowl. I'm an old lady too. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Okay, listen to what you're doing. I said, if that's your expectation, that's the way you're talking to yourself every day. That's what we're going to be getting, right? We've got to be thinking, first of all, it's not about age right? It's maybe it's diet. Maybe it's, we didn't prioritize sleep. We could have gone to bed a little bit earlier, you know, and you may feel younger by changing some of our lifestyle habits, but you know, we don't let that language hang around very often before Deborah's all over it, you know, on let's talk about expectations and ageism and how we do it to ourselves, not how other people do it, but we're doing it all the time. So true. I got to catch myself because I will, I will catch myself going, oh, I'm old, you know, da, 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 dot, dot, dot. No, because <laughs> I, I'm the last person that wants, I'm like the anti-aging queen. Like right. my goal is literally to look 40 at 80. So why am I saying that to myself? I'm literally speaking it out loud to the universe by saying that. Yeah. Yeah. It is so true. And I don't, so we don't use that word though, either anti-aging, we use pro-aging, you uh-huh. know, so that my hope is like someday this whole conversation is like, we don't even see these memes that this was my meme today. Honestly, someone else had posted age is not an excuse. And it was on a t-shirt I saw. And I was like, okay, I'm going to give you the rest of the story. Like age is not an excuse. Age is a reason. Like, like we've got more urgency. We cannot be skipping the workouts. I mean, we've got from 50 to a hundred, right? Somebody else may have from zero to 50, but we're not in that game anymore. We're in the second half. This is where the right. games are won, right? Yep. So we've got some more urgency about what we're doing and, you know, we're pro aging, because we're not going to probably get out of this one alive, right? We're not really going to reverse it, but we can totally change the expectation. 
So that some 20 year old is no longer thinking when they look at their parents or grandparents who are 75, that's old. They're just going to think, well, I thought everybody went hang gliding, you know, when they were 75 or whatever it is. (laughs) Yes, I love it. I love it. And speaking of things you see in a t-shirt, I think we should get t-shirts made that has LSH on it, lift heavy shit. Because I say it all the time. That's how you boost (laughs) testosterone naturally. And that's what we're saying these women need to do. Just lift heavy shit and your body will improve. Yes, absolutely right. If there's anybody out there thinking, well, I can't, I've got this joint issue or that one, picking up as heavy as you can and then playing with tempo, you know, is another way to do it. So you slow way down and that changes the game so that at least you're reaching muscular fatigue, which we really, we didn't hit on and we should probably do that. So this is not just about doing your three sets of 10 repetitions and putting the weight down because I got to 10. It's like, if you have five more in there, you have to keep going. You need to do them until the muscle is saying, ah, I can't get the full range of motion anymore. I'm really done. Mm -hmm. Every set, if you're doing three sets, that happens in set one and two and three, not just three. I like that. That's another mistake. Yeah. Oh, it's a huge mistake. I I make the same mistake of, uh, sometimes you have that, just like you said in the beginning, that three sets of 10, three sets of 15, mm-hmm. and you go, this is what I'm going to do. And then are you fatigued? Did you lift a heavy enough weight? Did you just go through the motions? Did you think about the muscle contracting? I mean, I think it's very easy just to mindlessly lift a weight. But when it you is. actually think about it, that brings a whole nother level of contraction and, and muscle hypertrophy where it actually grows. That brings a whole nother level to the muscle. Because you're thinking about it, you're thinking about contracting it, you're thinking about using the weight and what's actually occurring. And then that way you don't cheat with other muscles too. Yeah, that's exactly right. And then like that hypertrophy that happens between, we should talk about recovery, right? Because as you're over 40, definitely over 50, for those of you that are over 60, if you're not changing this, you probably should. We need more recovery time. And that's not, again, we don't want to go back and say, oh, because I'm old. Well, okay, yes. I mean, your bones and your muscles and your ligaments and your joints are all older than they were when you were born. It's true. But it's about just you need a little longer to repair. And you can be as strong relatively to what you were 10 years ago or 20 years ago if you recover. But if you don't, if you keep the same consistency, you're probably breaking down. So each time you go to do that workout again, you may not actually be as strong as you could. So you're not getting the benefit out of that workout. And so fewer workouts sometimes per week then end up resulting in better fitness. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday may not work as well as Monday, Thursday. Mm -hmm. And then you're still moving on those other days. You're just not taxing your body with the same kind of strength training. Right. That's perfect. Yeah. Recovery is, is vital. And then that kind of pulls in that less food is not good. Low protein is not good because as you said, I'm so grateful you said this too. Again, my patients need to listen to this. Muscle is made up of protein and amino acids. I say that at every consultation because notoriously women are low in protein. And some guys are too, but women are, they're notorious for it. Yeah. And so I I go through, I go, if you're not getting in enough protein, like let's not even talk about you working out, day-to-day functioning of your body. Our bodies are so smart. Where are they going to take, where's it going to take it from? It's going to break down your muscle tissue. Now let's say you're breaking it down by working out, which is what we want to do. We want to break it down so it can build back up. Where's the building blocks? If you're not eating protein, where's the building blocks coming from? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and recently for those women who are, you know, in their fifties or sixties and watching maybe their parents fracture or have osteoporosis, mm-hmm. you know, it's become, you know, in the last five to eight years, more consciously that we're promoting protein also for bone density. And it used to be 95 
back then when I started first lecturing about osteoporosis, what it was, how do you exercise for avoiding it or dealing with it if you've got it? Mm -hmm. We used to say that eating too much protein made calcium leach from the bones. Mm -hmm. That was actually a risk factor at one point. And so women who learned that long ago sometimes still think that's a negative thing. So we need to, again, unlearning some of yep. the old science because science grows, gets stronger. And we now know bone needs protein and the protein that feeds the muscles makes you strong enough to do the things that build the bone. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful tie-in. And the bone does not need over high amounts of calcium. So taking right. your steel drug and your, you know, your Fosamax, your calcium, that's not going to do it. Just LHS, lift heavy shit and you'll be okay. <laughs> simply, <laughs> simply said. Simply said. So Deb, I, I want, because I know the listeners are going to be asking this, how can they become, you talked about your community and actually working mm-hmm. with you and just getting off the phone with a client. So how mm-hmm. can people, what are the variety of different ways that they can work with you so they can ask the questions of what should I be doing workout wise then? Absolutely. Well, like you, I've got a podcast, so that's one place, but our podcast listeners or somebody who's got a question who's thinking, would love to either have this answered right now or on a podcast, potentially, we have a Facebook group called the Flipping 5050 Insiders Group. And that's for anybody who's been at my YouTube channel. There are a lot of videos there and watch the podcast or watch Flipping 50 TV. There are 39 episodes that have answered most common questions that women answer. And we've got a five-day flip. So that is also just a, if you need to start, you need to restart, or you are like me, kind of an overdoer, and that's not working. And you need to just pull back a little bit to say, okay, I might as well try this because I can always go back to what's not working now if I want to. That is five videos, short videos every day for five days with an audio telling you why I'm having you do this and how it's linked to the influence that it's having Mm -hmm. on your hormones so that you've got a better understanding by the time five days are done. So that's flipping50.com forward slash five, the number, day flip. I love it. And we'll have all those links in the show notes as well. Great. So you can link to them. And then you gave this beautiful freebie. I mean, that is the five-day flip. I mean, you're, this is a video series. These, these are all doable videos. I mean, why not yeah. jump on this? It, it is free. Deb is giving this for free. So why not jump on this and, and try it out? I mean, that sounds that sounds like a plan to me, especially if you are so lost. easy. Yeah, it's yeah. so easy. Yep. So if you, I mean, we have one last question. I think this is a good one to end on as well. The best ratio of weights to cardio per week to build muscle and lean out, that's going to be answered in there. And like you said, it's going to give you that snippet of what you can take to the whole month, week after week, month after month. But what what do you, if you had to give an in general answer, and I, you know, I guess it's different for each person and their health and where they're at in their life, True. but what would be the, the generalized, like you said, you do two days of weights, two days of high intensity? Yeah. Two days yeah. of, two days of strength training, 72 hours apart, mm-hmm. two days of interval training, and then a lot of low. So it's kind of We hit the highs with the heavy shit and with the interval training, getting breathless. And then we do the lows, but we stay out of this messy middle because this is where cortisol goes crazy. So we're going to stay out of there. We're going to reduce cortisol. We're going to hit it and quit it. That also reduces cortisol. I love that. That That's the perfect capstone to this interview. Great piece of advice. Well, thank thank you so much much for having me. I love that. This is just the, the, the key important information that my listeners need, we don't talk about exercise enough. So when I have a guest on, I really like diving into it and it helps for them to hear stop being a cardio queen from someone other than me. So it helps when they hear it multiple times, whenever we hear something multiple times, you know, that third time it might stick and you might be the woman right now going, you know, I know I bought that Peloton, but that's not doing anything for my bones. Like Deb said, and all I'm doing is blowing out my adrenals and I'm not lifting anything heavy. 
So it's okay to be an acquaintance with your Peloton. You just don't want to be besties with your Peloton, right? <laughs> <Be bestie. laughs> exactly. Well said. Well said. I thank you for your time. And you are welcome. I thank you. Definitely look at that stuff. It's it's amazing. Amazing.